Hey guys, I'm Gus Kvatchian. Remember me? Uh, I, I, I sure don't. Uh, who, do, who the hell am I? Uh, I have been putting off creating a lot of content because I have been waiting for mods to get released. Uh, that's a horrible excuse. Like, I want to play RP1 for you guys, but that's still in development. I want to play, like, I don't know, 1.4.1 with Ferrum installed at the very least. Uh, that's not going to happen for a while. Uh, Ferrum uh, is a uh, very busy developer. He makes the greatest mod available, but uh, he has to do other things as well. Uh, instead of coming up with a lot of excuses uh, to not create a lot of content, I want to create content for you guys. Uh, so we're going to make a hardcore campaign for the tubes. Yay! It's going to be a career mode. And we're going to play with no mods at all. Yeah, no mods. Uh, no engineer, no uh, mech jab, no nothing. Uh, so no Delta V readouts, no TWR readouts, we're going to do all that manually and it's going to show off the game as it was supposed to be played by newcomers to the game, by according to the developers. Um, of course, normal mode, I guess that's where they want it to be, but uh, you, you, you go get into this game and you assume you know stuff, so you go hard mode and well, already these settings are pretty brutal, but we'll um, we'll make them easier in some places where I think the um, the balance is off, and uh, make them harder in some places just because we like to challenge ourselves. Uh, as you know, uh, this will not be a frustrating exercise in loading screens as a 64k Odyssey was, because no mods means like no loading screens. This is on an SSD as well because. No mods means it doesn't take up very much hard drive space. Uh, so that was a freebie. Uh, what we will do here... Uh, first thing is to look at the career options, obviously. Uh, the science funds and reputation rewards are fine. We will even dial back the reputation rewards. That will actually make the game easier. We will keep on getting contracts all the way through that we can actually complete instead of just never losing any rep because we keep our astronauts safe, hopefully. Funds, penalties, we will dial this back to 100%. We won't fail in contracts, but what that does is it reduces the uh, unlock costs for uh, tiers of the uh, of the buildings uh, of the KSE. This is of course undocumented in the game, but that's, that's good to know. If you ever feel like it's very grindy getting to the next level of like the research center, Dial that back in the uh, difficulty settings, and you will be fine. Uh, reputation penalties, whatever, like doesn't affect us. We won't lose and rep decline penalty. We can actually keep that in case we want to dial back our reputation when you start feeling like okay, I want to like keep on launching satellites into e uh, into Kerbin orbit instead of always la launching them to like Pole or Bob or Elo. Uh, no revert flights, no quick loading, missing crews won't respawn, we want auto hire, no entry purchase, that's fine. Uh, indestructible facilities, we want. We probably want to keep that, because uh, if we want to launch a really big rocket, we don't actually want to pay for the launch pad every time we do so. Because uh, launch big rockets and, uh, and the launch pad, they tend to be hypergolic with one another, which means they ignite on contact. Uh, we will allow other launch sites uh, to make the game easier and also to like actually m show off that I purchased making history because uh, yeah we, we, we gotta get our money's worth here. Uh, we want to require signal for control. We won't enable plasma blackout because there are issues with that. We can discuss that later perhaps. Uh, for our occlusion modifier it's more realistic to play with 0.95 because at least for atmospheres. We will do it hardcore style for uh, non-atmospheric bodies, but atmospheres reflect um, radio waves, so that that means we can actually see slightly past the horizon, which is realistic and fine. Uh, da -da -da -da. Kerbal experience, yes. Level up immediately. No, let's bring a science lab everywhere. Uh, negative funds in science, I don't know what that does, so let's not enable it. Kerbal G-force limits, absolutely. Kerbal G-force tolerance, no way, let's bring this down. 
the default means you can probably sustain I think like 9G for extended periods totally not reasonable we want it like 0.3 and I'll show you that we will only sometimes lose conscience consciousness we will lose conscience as well when we kill all our crew but uh, that's neither here nor there uh, we won't refuel with uh, the grabbing unit because that doesn't make sense. We, if we want to refuel stuff, we will uh, dock properly. We will always allow action groups because that's a very arbitrary limitation. We will have part upgrades, yeah, because I don't actually know which parts are affected by that. Anyways, that's our difficulty settings. We are playing hard mode and uh, then some. I guess. Uh, what's our com network range modifier? Let's just bring this up a bit, I suppose. Because it's very poorly documented how the uh, stock com net works. And until I actually add like a spreadsheet to do those calculations, we'll, we'll just keep it a bit simpler for our own sake. There we are. This is hard mode Kerbal Space Program without mods. Why would you want to play such a thing? Well, because what this does that no other KSP install really does is force you to teach you, uh, yourself the physics behind it all. Uh, if you install as much as Kerbal Engineer, like the one mod uh, you get, unless you get a job, uh, in every install, you uh, deprive yourself of the fun of learning about thrust to weight ratios, the rocket equation, all of that. Uh, even if you're playing RO, you miss out on so much. We will talk about synchronous orbits, we will talk about anything. We're playing stock, we're not playing with ferrum. This would probably work very fine with ferrum, even if we didn't have a fairing. Because it's round, it diverts airflow perfectly. Not in stock, it's, it's, it's a brick wall. Uh, air just loves running into this. Um, anyways, uh, as we usually do, we're going to remove the monopropellant. It's not documented what this 10 units are. Uh, that's 10 liters, of course, but the monopropellant is very dense. It's 4 kilograms per liter, so that's 40 kilograms we just saved by removing that. Uh, this will not matter for our first launch, but later on Delta V will be actually become important, as you all know. Parachute, we have one of them. We are going to need it. Uh, we have science. We're going to need Mr. Goo. We won't attach it to a pro pod like this, because now the part is angled to the airflow. We wanted to actually angle it like flush with the airflow uh, to reduce the drag. Not that that makes sense. This is actually less drag inducing than, uh, let's see, let's just replace it, than this. Even though this is flush with the body, uh, that actually induces more drag according to the stock physics model. So we won't do that. We will add a flea booster. Uh, we will not bring all this solid fuel. Again, what does 140 units mean? Well, that's 140 units times 7.5 kilograms, because that's what it says in the config files. You can also calculate it by checking the mass down here as you move this around. Half load out, that's going to be fine. We're just going to go do a quick jump. Then we want science. We don't want one. We don't want two. We want more than that. We want like four of them. We're not going to approach them like that. Uh, why? Because we want action groups. And if you go and uh, want to add an action group and like observe the mystery, well, that's all symmetry parts in that configuration. That's four of them. That's not what we want. We want each one on a separate action group. So we will add one. Uh, that one is already bound to action group one by now, I think. Uh, we'll just drag this out and copy this uh, prefab then, uh, which isn't bound to an action group, so we can bind, bind them all separately. Uh, there is one action we want to bind for all of these to one action group, and that is the uh, toggle cover. Uh, many don't do not know about this feature, or um, if you want to call it a feature, it's an annoying feature, but it's a feature nonetheless. Uh, it takes a second to run that experiment, and uh, same goes for the uh, the materials bay, uh, because it has to run the animation before it takes the science sample. Uh, if you're only in a situation for a, a very brief time, 
like say you're skipping up in your rocket ship and you reach uh, 70.05 kilometers or whatever and you only stay there for a couple of seconds you have to be very quick to run that uh, you want to run it instantaneously if you toggle the cover for first then you can run it instantly afterwards it's amazing now anyways this is bound to action group 1 uh, this will be bound bound to action group 2 to action group 3 we bind that and to action group 4 we bind that yeah this is just a lot of housekeeping and uh, we will reuse this craft for obvious reasons because this takes a lot of time to set up anyways uh, now they are not balanced they are at different heights as you can see what you do to fix that is you go into offset mode and you make sure you're in absolute mode that will offset them evenly uh, evenly distanced from the center of your craft uh, not the center of your root part. I've done some experimentation on this and I'm not actually sure how it works. Uh, I have done a lot of experimentation in this game since I've been playing it for like 9,000 hours or more. Uh, I don't want you guys to have to play that this game for like 9,000 hours or more because maybe you don't enjoy it as much as I do. So I'm teaching you all of this for free. Congratulations. Best deal in the galaxy. Uh, now we have the science, we have the booster, we have the crew pod, we have the recovery method. The only thing we don't really have is a lot of control, right? Because this doesn't have any gimbling, the only control we have the RC is the RCS. So you figure, okay, let's add some fins. No, let's not add any fins. This is a common misconception, one that m many high-profile YouTubers don't even get right. Uh, the fins don't actually provide any control, right? Uh, they just act as a lifting surface, so they uh, they make sure you don't tip over. That means you get stability, it doesn't mean you get control. How to think about this is that if we add like a four-way symmetry of fins like this, our center of lift is back here, our center mass is over here. You can say that our, s our spacecraft will, um, will sort of hang from its center of mass and it's going to weigh down towards the center of lift while in an atmosphere. So you can th th sort of think of it as a string someone's pulling and it's going to pull in the direction of the center of lift and align your craft thusly. However, say we are coming down from a high altitude as this pod will do in any future incarnation. Uh, right now we're not going very far very high up, we even drain some solid fuel. But later on, when we're coming down from a suborbital trajectory going straight down, we are going with fins to end up in this configuration, uh, because the aerodynamics will sort of pull this side up. Uh, this is a very aerodynamic configuration, and that's great if you're flying a plane, like you don't want to induce a lot of drag, you want lift instead. Uh, the problem is, this is going to end up going straight down into the ground with disastrous consequences. Uh, it won't give uh, enough time for us to slow down so the parachute actually deploys safely. Instead, if we go without the fins, we have more control. We don't have any, any stability really, uh, although some at least, because our center mass will still be offset in one direction when this is trained, it will be all the way up here. So we'll still ten tend to go nose down into the ground, but less so, and that means we actually have more control without the fins. Really backwards thinking. Yeah, uh, wish they documented that a bit more. So that's that's um, an error you will see even experienced players actually go through. Anyways, now to control. Uh, if we fire this at 100%, it has a lot of thrust when you look at it. This has a, about the same thrust as a swivel engine, and you would use a swivel engine with a rocket. It's like this high! And if it's that high, it weighs a lot more, so you end up with a very high thrust to weight ratio. How do you calculate your thrust to weight ratio? Well, you take your thrust, you divide it by your weight, which is your mass, uh, in our case about 2 tons, D times the uh, gravitational pull of the planet Kerbin, which is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared at sea level. Now, if you want to do this using a calculator, it's not necessarily that so that the calculator you use 
oh my god, spoilers, is going to be able to uh, store values. So um, how do you, I mean, this one does in a couple of ways. We have parentheses, so we can actually compound our, uh, our expression the way we want to. Uh, we have a copy and paste function. But assuming you use the most basic calculator, which only does one calculation at a time, how would you figure this out without storing the values you get from partial calculations? Well, we can do the opposite of what we want to do. We want to divide our thrust by our weight. Now, we can calculate our weight first and divide that by our thrust, which is the opposite of what we want to do. You're thinking, what? Why are you doing this? Spatian, you're a madman. And that is also true, but uh, I have a point with this. We are going to calculate our weight, like so. This is how many kilonewtons of force gravity is acting upon this craft at sea level. Yay! Uh, we then want to divide this by our thrust, which is the opposite of what we really want to do, but check this out, once we divide by our thrust we can take the reciprocal of this value, which means dividing 1 by this value. This will give us our thrust to weight ratio, because this is the same thing as instead of dividing this by this, dividing this by this. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I even follow that myself. Anyways, having done so, we know our thrust to weight ratio is 8, we want it not to be 8 because that will mean we flip out early. We want it to be reasonable, we want to be at, say, like 2 initially. That's going to be fine. Uh, what we do then is, again, we're doing the opposite of what we really want. What we really want is to divide our desired thrust-to-weight ratio by our actual thrust-to-weight ratio, and that will no let us know which throttle to set our rockets to. Uh, so what we do is the opposite, again, of what we really want. We divide it by the desired thrust to weight ratio, which is 2, and then we flip it with the reciprocal. Yay! And that tells us how many percent we set the throttle to, and we have that. That is not a booster, this is. We set the throttle to 25%, was it? Yes, it was. And that will mean we have a TWR of 2 which means we won't be going too fast, and we will actually retain control in the atmosphere. Now, uh, we're going to place Jebediah here, we're going to get our money's worth, not that I actually prefer those suits or anything. And uh, we had the toggle covers there, we also probably want the crew report action bound. Action grouped, bound to an action group. Worbs. We want a name for this, this is of course liftoff because that's what we're aiming for. Exclamation mark! Save that, launch that. We can launch it from a different launch site later, that's fine. Let's just go for the regular one right now. Uh, the uh, other launch pads had the issue early on that uh, you didn't actually have any DSN coverage there, so you couldn't launch probes from there. Very annoying. That's why I haven't been playing with them much. But now with the new one, I know the new one has a DSN, uh, site. I'm. I assume they added one to Woomerang as well. Anyways, we're going to uh, run that and see how that took a while. Now, imagine if we had. Okay, that's crew party. Imagine if we had opened these before, then it would run instantaneously, and we, you will see that in flight. Uh, anyways, we took the crew report. We will g go for an EVA as well because that's good data. We're going also collect the crew report. Yay! and then store it in the science container module of this pod instead of the science experiment module. You're expected to know the difference between those while playing the game without reading the config files because that's cheating somehow. I don't... This game needs a lot of update to its documentation. 3 to 1 we launch, we have a thrust weight of 2, this will allow us to maintain control through the f throughout the flight. Amazing! We're going to run our experiments. From the f this is going to be the highest value experiment we are need. We're going to be in three situations in total, because we're not going to la land on the launch pad. 
So, we can run this twice actually in flight and we're going to get more data that way than any other way. So we run the crew report as well and notice how that was instantaneous. You can hear my button presses I'm sure. So, uh, so that's going to be fine. And then we activate our parachute through staging and then we can totally disable control because we don't care. Notice how we tend to angle nose down. Our parachute is sort of keeping us up, but of course it wouldn't be if it didn't deploy if we were coming down at like 500 meters per second because that is not a safe deploy speed for the parachute. So we really don't want that sta static stability that you so often encounter when you add fins. Uh, anyways, we're going to come down here. Uh, we have one experiment left to run. We're of course going to take an EVA report as well as another crew report and then all that good stuff. We're going to miss out on one report however, which is flying. And that's because we don't have the astronaut center upgraded. Now what you could do... Uh, first of all, let's just get that. Good. This was for, from the KSC. Let's note that for future reference. Uh, we're going to take the EVA report here. We're going to take the data. We're going to board again. Uh, we had that action bound, but I figured it was just click the button. Uh, this one is closed, but of course we have collected that. Uh, it was just toggled by our action group. Uh, and uh, we're going to perform an another EVA are we? We already performed one. Uh, okay, let's, let's just go for it. Yeah. What you may or may not know is that if you take an EVA report while, while jumping, you get flying EVA report and, uh, and that's much safer than jumping out of the pod while in the air. So let's recover and we're going to have to do this twice, but that's fine. So that's a lot of data. This is another batch of data. Uh, I'm sure we got a little more data by reco recovering two craft. We could min-max this for a lot of money. Not money, but science. And, uh, and yeah, that's our science. We get our nodes. We want basic rocketry because that makes a lot of sense getting this early on. Is it the swivel that we get first? Yeah, for some reason. I'm sure that was the other way around at some point because I'm, I'm sure of it. Don't question me. And the first node of these three that we will unlock is of course not stability. Because this isn't control, this is stability. We need to differentiate between those two things. We will not unlock general rocketry even if we could afford it. Because we want more data and that we get over here. Yay! So that's how you play Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we'll get back to this even more in the next episode. I've been Gaspachian and see you soon.